So you're not going to get a lot of Dutch from me. But uh, I love being here. This is my first time here. And thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. Uh, JP has a presentation today. Everybody knows JP DeWin. Dutch, Nederlands, right? He speaks plenty of Nederlands. So uh, here's JP. Thank you. So happy that Jack was able to come over to, uh, to Holland to see this presentation, to show uh, the prototype. It's, uh, it's great that we have the game here. Um, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the animations on the screen. Um, I'm going to talk about the, um, and the development of the, the, uh, the user interface. So um, this is the first time I'm going uh, to try to do a keynote with, uh, with the iPhone. So let me try if this works. And blame Steve Jobs, yeah. <laughs> So, it was just working. Ah, there we go. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I've got to probably going to do something with the uh, network here. seen this one. So I'm going to talk about the user interface. Um, with, um, so I also worked on The Wizard of Oz. That was our first uh, game with a big LCD screen. Um, first time we uh, ever done in pinball. Well, there was, there was master play in uh, Spain, but probably didn't take as, as far as we, we did. And maybe you can compare this uh, interface with uh, uh, the first dot matrix, Gilligan's Island. Nobody knew how we're going to do animations on the screen. So also the, um, the, the layout, how we're going to show all the, uh, the, the clips. And, and so we came up with this layout, which is pretty basic if you look at what, what, we come up, what we've come up now with uh, The Hobbit. Um, so People also ask me when I started with The Hobbit, are you going to use the same layout? Are you going to use the same four screens? And I said, well, no. We're just, just starting to uh, discover and, and, and we're going to try and do something else. And it's a different theme. So every, I think every pinball game with a big LCD has got to have its own uh, design, its own uh, layout. Um, so. I started, when you start with, um, with the theme, you, you are looking for inspiration on the internet, on other games, other, there's like a Lord of the Rings um, uh, slot machine with a digital screen and you can get some inspiration from that. Other iPad games and, and epic, like epic games. Uh, that, and, and even, you know, you come across uh, a tattooed guy who has got some sort of dwarfish patterns on his, uh, on, his, uh, on his arm. And that gives imp inspiration. And then you, you've got access to Warner Brothers Assets site, which has like a thousand of uh, um, pa original patterns created for the movies. And that's just great assets to work with. With The Wizard of Oz, it's an old movie. There was not that much material to work with. So, and the studio also wants us to use these. You, you can't really create your own Bilbo Baggins uh, 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 logo type or 
or a typeface. And I really wanted to use a lot of these because it's just great material. So next step, or I'm going to show you some of the, the, the phases I went through for uh, developing the, the layout. And at first, I was looking into the circle, like uh, the Bilbo, Bilbo's uh, house. It's got a, a round door. And uh, Keith came up with the idea, yeah, maybe we should show the movies in the middle of the screen. But um, the, the movie has a wide aspect ratio. So you lose a lot of the, um, the movie if you use uh, basically a square screen, a screen. And then we had, I had this uh, mock-up for, OK, we're gonna, we can use a lot of mini screens. But you know, also what we found out with Wheels of Oz is there's a lot, so much going on in the four screens. There's mixing up a lot of videos. And, so I tried to put some um, um, put some uh, um, elements in the corners that will stay in the game and will basically uh, stay there and not change uh, the, uh, the the content won't change. So more development, more uh, getting more material in, getting. And this is where I came up with more the straight shapes, the, the dwarfish uh, shapes. Like you see the, the towers in the back, they also got very straight lines. And I really uh, thought that was a good way to go. Um, next step, I also use the map. I think um, I also like the idea of the uh, Nina Jones Williams uh, game where you where you, uh, when you start a mode, you travel, uh, you see a short animation of the, the map, and I think that's an important uh, feature in the, in, the, in the Hobbit movie as well, that you uh, cross the map. So Keith comes up with uh, a rules document in, uh, in Word, and, and it's all written out, and, it's all, and you gotta find out what he wants to do with the game. And I, what I do is, I um, create this flowchart to get an idea of what what are the most important parts to um, to get on the screen and how are you gonna um, guide the player towards um, the the goal of the game. So our most imp the, our wizard goal is to to light the Arkenstone and the Arkenstone is on the play field in the in front of the flippers. And you have to light. You can light the Arkenstone by playing uh, a smog multiball. You can. Uh, you have to advance to Erebor to the end of the the map. Uh, you have to complete at least one mode. Uh, play a beast. Uh, play all beast friend. Uh, play beast frenzy. That's by defeating all the beasts and collect all the dwarfs, which are hidden behind the drop targets, or uh, in, uh, they're in the outer loops, and you've got uh, Balin in, uh, in the virtual upkicker. Um, so that's what you see here. So you got the multiple progress, the map travel, beast hurry ups, and this is an early version. The, the collect dwarfs has moved to the, um, to the lower part. And this, this is the final uh, layout. So got to collect all the dwarfs, beasts. And on the top tab, you see um, how you can start and uh, enable modes. And eventually, I came up. Uh, Keith wanted to put a lot of modes in. Like, uh, we want to show a lot of the movie assets. Uh, we want to show how great uh, The Hobbit is. And um, so. I came up with, in the middle, having the, all the hexagons will represent all the modes in the game. So now you see there is a few missing because we haven't had assets for the uh, third movie yet. But um, consider these also like the Indiana Jones modes where there's uh, four for each movie. Here there's 10 for each movie. And some will be really quick, like quick hurry ups or um, and, and some will be, uh, mostly will be timed modes, so hopefully uh, <laughs> you will be able to see them all. Um, but I think it's a good thing as well that, that people will come back and maybe in one game play just three modes and they want to see all the others, so it keeps 
attracting people back to the game. Um, so also in the corners, you see the, the, the five gold elements. That those will light up if, if when you've collected those. When you've collected the, those five elements, the Arkham Stone will be lit and you will play a movie multiball for the first movie, second movie, and the third movie. Um, so and then the main screen, because at first the main screen will show the main screen will act basically as the the um, the the way DMDs are used now. They show they show the active mode, and um, so when the mode is not running, you will see the hexagons and what you've collected. And we tried also to get it uh, better, uh, the, the monitor better integrated in the back glass by adding the same uh, pattern all around the, um, the monitor. Um, unfortunately, the, this back glass, which is, this is the final, uh, is not in this uh, prototype, but um, I think that's um, really uh, tying uh, <laughs> the monitor to the game. <laughs> um, now some animations. Um, with the Wizard of Oz, um, the backlash was created before I was um, involved in the project. So Jerry Van der Stel drew a backlash, and we and the whole team thought, okay, we're gonna have um, we can display this backlash on the monitor. But then we found out, no, we can actually also do animations on that. And and I added that, uh, and I was pretty restricted because the whole piece was just a flat image and and there was so much more to do and now when we started with the hobbit uh, we came across almost immediately we came across these um, these banners which uh, tell the movie um, uh, for for each movie i think they created one or two banners and it tells the story from start to end and I suggested uh, let's do let's do um, several backlashes for uh, track mode. So we don't have one static image, we don't have um, one backlash. So that's when I presented this. Let's maybe we can do a pan shot, and then um, I took it uh, one step further and created uh, 3D um, of these uh, images. So you cut out all the pieces and you put them in in into uh, into a Z space, as you call it, say that, and then you, well, it's a, it's a long process to, <laughs> to actually explain this, but we want to wanna pretty up the, the, the back glass and add track mode. So I also added some, some subtle animations to, uh, to get some surprise effects, like uh, here in the end you'll see uh, Smog opening in his eye. Um, now, for in, uh, what we also did in the Wizard of Oz is uh, add pinball-related uh, references in, in the f actual footage. And we, um, that's what we all want to see, right? We want to, even in, in dot, an, dot matrix animations, you also want to see pinball-related stuff in the movie. So we were able to do that in the Wizard of Oz, but with uh, The Hobbit, there uh, the more stricter uh, rules on that. So, um, one of the first tests I did was uh, get a scene and and and, and I created this mock-up uh, sample to see how this could uh, work. And um, we sent this to to Warner Brothers, and they didn't actually know what what uh, if this was possible to do. So they actually sent it to Peter Jackson, and. Um, I was really surprised by that, and I I thought, well, maybe maybe I should have put some text in there like it's a preface. It's not this is not the final sample, but it was rejected by Peter Jackson, and uh, it was pretty clear that we couldn't we couldn't just alternate the footage, and we basically just have to use uh, the the movie. We can add it and and and, and re-add it and make make loops, but. Um, Unfortunately, not not this kind of stuff. So um, we, here's another example of where we, where Bilbo is looking at the, 
the ring, and instead there is a pinball. But um, the ring is, is sacred. You can't actually do anything with the ring. It's got to be, it's got to be perfect. <laughs> um, so what we can do is samples like this. We use the footage, and there is like a short, actually short animation towards my own creation of um, my own graphics. And um, so this is approved. This you will see this in the game. And this is the start, the start of multiball, where we also have a hard cut from from the actual footage to our own motion graphics. Um, and here is an example of when you start start a mode. Um, also inspired by Indiana Jones, I think, uh, is getting the map, show a short description of what you have to do. And during this mode, you will have a progressional um, uh, a scene. So we have a loop of Bilbo, and when you shoot a shot, he will, uh, a dwarf shows up at this door, and uh, we get another loop, next loop. And that will loop until you make the next shot. And another dwarf uh, shows up at the door. And eventually, you'll have the whole party in, and you have completed the mode. And it will be, it will be just cool to see the whole movie. You, you can you can play the whole movie. Right? So we yeah, this is one example. Next one is um, example of the, um, the troll scene. Also, same same example. We have first. This is a loop which plays all the time, like let's say 20 second, 30 second loop, and no no uh, trolls get hit in this loop. But once you make, you do make a shot in the game, you will see, um, you will see hit movies which will be placed uh, uh, directly on top of the, the loop. So here you see a hit, this is the loop, and there's another hit. When you play the game yourself, you probably won't see what's happening on the screen, but uh, the bystanders will, uh, will have a nice uh, thing to look at, I think. <laughs> and um, that's our goal, at least. Um, so this would be the end of the mode. You destroy the, the trolls. And that's what I wanted to show you so far on uh, what we're uh, working on. Um, that, so, uh, if there is any questions, um, I'm happy to uh, to answer those. <laughs> oh, Jack. Uh, you know. Um, um, sorry, uh, he asks, how long does it take to uh, to create one of those uh, movies? Well. Um, the movies itself now doesn't take that much time because we we basically got the movie and we put it in and programming also takes uh, less time. But um, yeah, how long does it take? Um, now now we can uh, make uh, let's say uh, mode in half a day. Um, with the Wizard of Oz, it was different because oh, that's not nice. Um, I'll turn it off. Um, with The Wizard of Oz, we had so much more going on on the screen, and we had to cut all pieces apart, and, and, um, and now uh, I think we also have a more efficient way of uh, producing uh, graphics for the game. Uh, Keith has his platform ready, so that's going a lot faster, putting all the elements in. And um, as you can see, yeah, yeah, that's... It's 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 easier, it's, uh, but then I got a lot of other work uh, to do as well for the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Open is it? Yeah. Yeah. So the question is if if we know much about the third movie. 
um, we do get um, information. We we do get uh, calls like Skype calls and with the uh, with um, Warner Brothers, and they tell us the the script of the third movie. But uh, we don't see any uh, any scenes or movies, or uh, they're not going to share that. So even Peter Jackson is not even finished editing. He's probably finished by the end of November, and then the movie goes to the theaters, and we can't uh, we we don't get the material by. Uh, when the the DVD comes out, so they're just afraid that if they're gonna send files to all the the people who buy the license, they're just you never know who's gonna leak any you know uh, material. So it's um, it's we we did we had, had expected that we would get it faster, uh, and so it's not uh, good for us that we have to wait, but. Um, that's the way. It, that's the way it just is now. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If the yeah, when the third movie comes out, we're gonna work our asses off to get the third movie in as soon as possible. It's uh, that's uh, it needs to be the the whole uh, the it's it's called the the, the movie. What does it say? Motion picture trilogy. So it's all the three movies. Yeah. But we're gonna go straight to the theaters when it comes out, so we can get our minds going on the, on all the modes. Yeah. Any more questions? If you have any other questions, just I walk around all weekend, and you can you can ask me uh, some personal uh, stuff as well. So. Oh, Jack is going to come on stage. Thank you very much. So, um, you know, there's always an opportunity to speak, and I never really pass that up. So uh, my wife always says that I'd get a lot more done if I talked less. So I kind of believe my wife. After 31 years of being married to her, I agree. JP is an amazing talent, and we were very, very, very lucky that he loved pinball and that he's able to do all of this magic. And he brought me a book on one of his visits to the U.S. early, uh, the Dutch pinball book, what, No Balls, No Glory, right? So he brought that book, and everybody that comes to visit me uh, that's Dutch in the book I pulled the book out, you know, Renz visited me the other day and other people have visited me. I pulled the book out and I make them autograph it because JP started the book and he wrote in there, thank you for bringing pinball back into my life. And that was really a cool thing, you know, and I appreciate it. And what JP's been able to do, he's been able to bring pinball into other people's lives. And part of that is not just the mechanical, physical metal ball, but my idea originally, and then what went to the rest of the team, was that we want young people to discover pinball, and we want women to discover pinball. There are women here, luckily, which is great. I used to go to these shows years ago, and there was just us freaks and geeks, guys that uh, had really long hair and tattoos and didn't shower for a week. And that was the, uh, the mainstream of the group. Uh, now there are families, there are wives, girlfriends, you know, and it's wonderful. And a lot of people have come up to me in the last couple of years now and said, you know, I played The Wizard of Oz, I love the game. I had a big husky guy at a pinball show earlier this year, like a biker guy, come up to me and say, you know, you caused a big problem for me. What's that? My wife wanted The Wizard of Oz game. Okay, so you got one more pinball machine. He said, yeah, I didn't think I'd like it, but I love it. I didn't like the theme, but I love the game. So if probably back in the old days, Henry Ford asked the people what they wanted, they'd probably say they wanted a faster horse. They probably would have not said they wanted a motorized vehicle. So a lot of times you really need to create something, and then the customer, buyer, 
user, player, they get to love it. And there's a big risk involved with that because certainly I don't know everything. This is my 40th year in the industry and I'm a technician. I've actually fixed pinball machines this week uh, while I was going through Germany. That's pretty funny, but I did. Uh, I made house calls. Um, I'll get back to that in a minute. So technician, operator, distributor, manufacturer, in all different phases, and a player, and a collector. So our company is kind of uniquely positioned because this side of my life, I have a commercial life where we service games, and um, I write in a trade magazine, and a lot of operators around the world, I guess, know me, and I uh, have that respect. And this side of my life, well, I'm just like you guys, a player and a collector and somebody that loves pinball. So the company's uniquely positioned to design games and develop games. And yeah, you know, it's true. You know, we didn't have a factory a while ago. We didn't have people a while ago. But, you know, it takes pinball people to build pinball machines. And I'm thrilled that there are many, many companies Starting up, I wish there were 50 companies building pinball machines, and maybe there will be. Um, you know, everybody makes their decisions, what they decide to do, how they're going to make their product. We decided we're putting a big LCD in there, and it's 27 inches only because of one reason. Does anybody know the reason why it's 27 inches in the, in the back box of our game? Guess? Anybody? <clears throat> I couldn't fit a bigger one in there. And that was my problem. I mean, you have a wide body game. If you think the Wizard of Oz is heavy, who has a Wizard of Oz, by the way? Anybody? Okay, cool. So if you think that game was heavy, uh, when you go get your Hobbit, if you order a Hobbit, it's heavier because there's more stuff in it. You know, we figured out there's more mechanisms. And the game out there is a prototype game. Prototype. What does that mean? Does anybody know what prototype means? Anybody? Yes, good. What is a prototype? Not finished. The game is not finished. Okay? The artwork for the play field changed. That is not the artwork that's going on in the game. JP avoided taking questions about that. All right? God bless you, JP. You know? But there's different artwork. Um, there are different features on the game. I like to tease you people. I know you beat the crap out of me on Robin's pin side, and that's fine. That's fine. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm a Brooklyn street operator. I could take it. Believe me. I had mob guys tap me on the shoulder and threaten me. You think a few of you keyboard guys hiding behind a keyboard are going to intimidate me? No. absolutely frickin not. not. By the way, anybody that's critical of anything, start your own pinball company. Everybody else is. It's real easy. So, I really think now at the stage we're at, you know, we do like to tease a little bit. We like to take constructive criticism. This time around, after we showed our game at Expo, you know, there were people, oh my God, I don't like the Vux. Oh, I don't like this. Hey, the good thing was the game wasn't done. You know, somebody else might say to you, tough luck, that's the game you're getting. That's what we designed, and that's what you're getting, and that's the end of it. Why? We don't have to do that. We're not done yet anyway. So could we integrate some better ideas, some other use of something? Most companies that develop a product, you know what they have? They have focus groups. They get a group of people like you, and they let you taste it, touch it, smell it, break it, play with it, and then they get comments. You know, you're the reason why we have a company. You started the company. The company would not have started unless People believed, first in me, and then the rest of the team, luckily, that we would build really great pinball machines. We don't want to build really crappy pinball machines. There are enough of them out there, okay? We want to build really great pinball machines. So you did all this work. You spent millions of dollars. It's going to take a little bit longer. Did I say the game's going to be delayed? No. You know, we're going to be in production the middle of December. What does that mean to me? To me, that means that these parts that are coming in, millions of dollars worth that have been ordered from all over the place, start coming in. 
People start making sub-assemblies, cabinets, play fields come in, all that stuff starts coming in, and we start building games. You know, Wizard of Oz, we built 25 prototypes that went all over the world and got the crap kicked out of them. And really, the software on Wizard of Oz right now is probably not done. You'll probably see another update come to that too because I'm not going to tell those guys don't work on that game anymore, we're done with that, it's finished with. You know, they still do add stuff to that. So, you know, it's not an easy thing. If I wanted easy, I don't know, I could have had a paper cup company or something like that. Um, it's challenging, it's rewarding. I went through, last week I was in France, uh, there was a huge show there, this is a great show, that was a great show. I had people come up to me that said, I never played Wizard of Oz. And I actually said, Jack, I never played the Wizard of Oz. It is a great game. I cannot believe. Oh, my God. Sacre bleu. What a game. Well, we had one guy that was a great story that I think it leaked onto Pinside, too. Some guy's name was Crispy. I'll just tell you this quickly. He was like the disciple of another company. And he teased his friends for two and a half years that bought Wizard of Oz. You will never get the game. The game is terrible. The theme is terrible. Sorry, any French here? Okay. The theme is terrible. Okay. All right, so he doesn't like it. What am I going to do? Not everybody's going to like it. It's not a theme for everybody. One in 20 people in France even know what the Wizard of Oz is. So the first day he comes to me and he tells me all this crap because he thinks I'm interested in knowing that. So he tells me that. Great. That was Saturday. Sunday, he canceled his other game he bought somewhere else. He bought a 75th anniversary Wizard of Oz. We opened it in front of more than 100 people. And the guy is like Jersey Jack Jr. at this point, writing on the groups and saying how wonderful the game is and sending me emails, gigantic emails about how his girlfriend loves the game and there were those that believed without seeing, right? That started the company, that gave us millions of dollars. Think of that, how crazy that is. I have business friends of mine that own, the billionaires, and they still can't believe that hundreds of people gave us millions of dollars to a company that did not have a factory or a product, and we built the game and delivered it, and it wasn't a Ponzi scheme. So he, now, he gets the advantage to see and believe, which is okay. I'm happy about that. You know, so kind of like our road, a lot of the tough things are kind of behind us, and there's always going to be challenges. Uh, Pat Lawler's game, um, it's going to be great. Why would I say it's not going to be great? It is going to be great. Um, not a license. You heard JP say a lot of things about what happens with licenses. You know, Peter Jackson didn't like it. Peter Jackson doesn't like it. Okay, so you can't do it. You know, uh, with Pat's game, it's our license. We can create anything we want. Uh, we want the pinball to do something on the screen or on the play field or whatever. So we need to create um, our own intellectual property. We need to create our own licenses. Um, I think it's important also for a company to define who it is from the beginning. You know, we didn't want to use P-Rock. Um, Jerry's a great guy. He's got a great product. It didn't do what we needed it to do. It's too slow for us. It didn't have the capability at the time to do what we needed to do. I don't know what it is today. But also, like I mentioned, my wife Joanne before, that I'm married to for 31 years, I didn't want to be married to Jerry Stellenberg. In case he decides to do something else or he gets hit by a bus, God forbid, or he goes in another business, I don't need him controlling my company. I'm going to control my company, okay? I'm a Brooklyn street operator. So again, you're not going to tell me what I could do and what I can't do. I'm going to do it the way I believe it should be done, okay? So getting in bed with a vendor that controls your company, probably not for me, okay? I don't like that. For somebody else, it's a great idea. It's good. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it enables people to do things. So again, we're going to continue to create new things, bring new technology to the game, The Hobbit, is probably, I could look at the videos, and to me, honestly, the videos in The Hobbit make Wizard of Oz look like an old game. And, you know, we said Wizard of Oz is going to be the greatest pinball machine ever built. That's what we needed to believe. 
The Hobbit team wants to believe that Wizard of Oz is the worst game we're ever going to build. And Pat's team, they're going to believe, you know, what they're going to believe too, because you still have to strive better and, you know, more and grow, you know. Anybody have any questions? Me? I've answered everything. So I'll tell you one quick story, and then we're out of here. Um, so this week, I was traveling through Germany, and I met a lot of customers. Some of them were existing customers of ours. Some of them were new customers through our German distributor, Freddy's Pinball Paradise. And I got, I got dragged around this week. You know, I was hostage. Uh, I don't have a car. But, you know, I had some great meals, and I had a lot of laughs, and I had a lot of fun. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was, it was great. You know, not everything went exactly the way I thought, and our schedule didn't work out all the time. So the other day, they said to me, um, we're going to deliver a game to a customer who happens to be a marshal in town, you know, like a sheriff. Would you go? What am I going to say? No. So they took apart a 75th anniversary Wizard of Oz. They took the head off, and they put it in a, a van, and they ha it had to go down um, a flight of... Um, you know, spiral stairs. So, um, you know, of course, they forget to bring a hand truck. Why would you need a hand truck anyway? Because you're going down spiral stairs. So I said, okay, I guess that's the way they do things in German, Germany. You know, I know the Germans are stubborn. They're not as stubborn as the Italians. Um, so we get there, and I, I walk up, you know, to the guy's house, and the guy's looking like this. And I don't know, they said something in German, and I heard Jersey Jack out of the German. And the guy starts going like this. This big guy, you know, that carries a gun. You know, is like jumping up and down like an eight-year-old just because I'm there. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, it's, it's the funniest thing in the world. But, you know, try to step into my uh, 11 and a half or 12 Pumas. And you know what? Um, it's really cool to have a company that designs and builds a product that brings happiness to people. And that's what our team does. That's what our company does. There's enough sadness and uh, bad things, and you watch the news, I don't know, in America, if we put the news on dinner time, it's not, a good, it's not good news. They report news, but it's not any news you want. You didn't, they didn't report on any flowers blooming on any trees or any birds singing or anything like that. It's all bad stuff. So, you know, if we could make a product that makes a grown man jump up and down like an eight-year-old and his wife and his daughter and everybody else gather around it and play it and even old people and young people all together, that's a really cool thing to bring. And it's a lot of satisfaction to see that. And it makes all the crazy posts on Pinside and all of the things that happen that don't go right all the time because... We plan for disaster, and if good things happen, we're okay. But we have to plan for disaster. So we really appreciate um, all of you loving pinball, spreading the word. It's growing bigger and bigger. And as more people do it, you know, the last one building it was a loser before. Okay, now there's a lot of people doing it, and everybody's a winner together. All right, so that's it. Thank you, and I'll catch you out there playing games. Bum bum.